Hey everyone, it's Tony here with Nerds Never Sleep, and it's time for the weekly roundup. Uh, this week, I stayed on track, and I got you a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, for example, I went with My Hero Monday again this week with this really, really awesome present Mike uh, Van Presto prize figure. Now, one thing you notice, uh, one thing I noticed from my uh, short video there was that he had some scratch marks on his pants here. Uh, I actually notified Amazon who I got it from about the paint defects and they sent me another one. So pretty cool. Uh, that is one of the perks of buying these uh, statues and collectibles online uh, through most retailers because you can actually get them replaced if there are defects. <laughs> uh, Twin Tuesday went with a little bit of an older one. And this is actually what's called the antique version of uh, basically the Queen of Hearts Ram. Now, they do have a standard costume with the vibrant red and black uh, paint on the on the uh, figure itself. But this one is called the uh, antique look, and it kind of has more of a uh, sepia tone. I really like it a lot. She came out awesome. Waifu Wednesday, because of all the buzz going around... <laughs> before all the strike stuff happened uh, on Friday, uh, with Deadpool 3, Wolverines coming back, uh, I and we had San Diego Comic-Con coming up. So what better chance than to bring up the San Diego Comic-Con 2016 exclusive of Lady Deadpool. And I really like this one a lot. She had her cool little swag bag. I wish they would do this with more of the convention exclusives. Uh, she just looked like a cosplay girl. You know, she had her swag bag. She's got her badge hanging down. Really cool. Not gigantic differences between this and the standard version, but just having the bag to throw on her shoulder and her lanyard and kind of the, the mask up over the face with her, uh, her food in her hand, her convention food. Uh, it, it just made it kind of look that much more fun. And when I paired her up with the X-23 with the mask off her face, they looked like a cosplay duo. It looked really, really cool. So I like that one a lot. Reincarnated on a Thursday, I went with one who I did an unboxing video with recently. And this was the uh, when I became king or when I became a king or that time I became king. Like I said, there's in my video, there's tons of different translations people have used for this uh this is guy crimson from that set he was one of the prizes in that kuji and i did do an unboxing for him and rimaru on the channel if you want to check those out love this one i liked him a lot figure friday went back to jujutsu kaisen with this awesome nobara uh my only gripe with her was her gigantic base uh, it's uh, something that I wish they would do with prize figures more where they would have just condense the base. I mean, even like these, these Bam Presto ones with the big giant circular bases, uh, if we could get something smaller, just so they just have a little bit of, of space saving, uh, it would be great. But I do like this piece. I thought she came out awesome. And then of course, Saturday, which is my kind of flip flop day. I went with Demon Slayer for Slayer Saturday with a super cute uh, Shinobu q -Posket. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with q -Poskets, q -Poskets are basically, uh, I always say they're, they're Japan's answer to Funko Pops because they're priced around the same range as a Funko Pop, maybe a little bit more depending on where you're buying them from. And they have so much more personality than Funko Pops. And you can see why things like these actually are doing pretty, you know, they're doing decent with collectors. And things like Funko Pops are filling landfills. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I have a hate for Funko Pops. Um, I do. Uh, I, you know, hot take. But these things, these Q Poskets are very stylized and they're really, really cool. Uh, and Shinobu's came out fantastic. So I kept up with everything this week. And uh, as far as page news, I did not give you guys Mojo. I know I talked about it last week that I was going to finally unbox Iron Studios Mojo from their X-Men line. But uh, due to some time constraints and stuff like that, I gave you guys another figure, which was the Iron Studios 110th 
Psylocke from the X-Men line as well. So hopefully that was all right. I also did, uh, again, a Kotobukiya and a, another pop-up parade figure as well this past week. So I did manage to keep my usual schedule up, which I'm going to try to do this week as well. So fingers crossed nothing comes up and we can get more content put out for you guys to enjoy. So that's it for the page updates for the roundup. I'm going to bring you guys over and let you guys take a closer look at all of the figures I highlighted this past week.
All right, so that was it for our closer, short views of these figures from the past week. Now, there is one thing I do want to know, and I am going to create some polls to kind of see if you guys prefer it or not. But when I started out doing these weekly roundups, I actually did uh, new clips of all the figures uh, to kind of give a different view. Now, would you guys like me to go back to that, or do you guys like me just inserting the shorts with the music and the effects and stuff like that into the video. Uh, it's something I'm kind of trying to play with and I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. Obviously, it's going to take more time to shoot every single figure individually, all six, sometimes even more when I have like the holidays come up. But it is something I'm curious about and see if you guys would like me to do it. If you guys want me to do it, I'm going to probably try it out next week and see how it works and see where it's going to fall as far as time constraints go but something I've kind of wanted to do, give you guys a little fresher take, a different view, a different look, rather than just showing you guys the same video I showed you this week. But at the same time, for those of you who don't see the shorts and don't see the reels and don't see the TikToks for the, throughout the week, excuse me, um, you can kind of see them all right here in one shot. So it, it has pluses and it has minuses. So I'm just kind of trying to see what you guys prefer. Um, now, anyways, normally I take my favorite high-end figure and my favorite low-end figure and show you guys them off. And to be honest, I got to do one switch here because whereas I love this San Diego Lady Deadpool, I got to give it this week to Guy Crimson because this figure just came out so freaking awesome that uh, I, I got to give the boy some love, um, you know. Sorry, Deadpool. Uh, again, I love the Deadpool. I love the late Deadpool. I think she looks phenomenal. But I got to give it to my boy Guy Crimson here for my choice between the higher-end figures. Now, even still, there is a price discrepancy here between these two. You know, the Kuji, high-end Kuji, he goes for about 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Dakota Bukia's now range a lot higher but back when she came out it was about 70 bucks so nowadays the bishojos go for 110 120 130 or higher so um these at the time of purchase were the same price point so that's what i'm going to gauge these off of and uh nobara is going to stay right where she is because this price figure came out so freaking awesome the dynamic pose, her holding her nails, the hammer, uh, the the pissed off look on her face, her aka her resting bitch face, uh, looks so damn good. And it was a really close up between her and present Mike because he came out a lot cooler than I thought he was going to, and I'm super happy I got him. Um, now, for those of you who are interested in any of these, if I do have product links, I will post them down in the description so you guys can click on those and go right to the sites. I believe I got him on sale on Amazon. I believe she is on Amazon as well, Shinobu, and I know uh, Nobara is on Amazon, as well as Guy Crimson, which I did post a link for him in my unboxing video. So if you guys check the descriptions, I'm going to have links to all of these that are available on specific sites that I could find. So I gave you guys my favorites for this week. Which one was yours? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you guys thought of all these. And again, what kind of fandoms and uh, kind of nerd-centric stuff you guys would like me to highlight next. Uh, one more update before I go. I don't know if you guys noticed, I am rocking my Chocobo shirt. I did this morning. I didn't want to do it on live streams because I didn't want to spoil it too much. I got it through the last 13 side quests that opened up in Final Fantasy 16 last night and beat the game this morning. I have very mixed thoughts and I'm very torn about the game now that I have finished it. So I'm going to be posting my first review this week. I'm going to be recording my thoughts and kind of my opinions on things. I'm going to do it completely spoiler free. And at the end of the video, I am going to make a spoiler section where I kind of spoil some of the things in the games that I liked and didn't like. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try giving you guys a review and see what you all think. I'd love you guys to discuss it with me uh, when I do release the video. Also, 
Mojo is coming this week, as well as my usual pop-up parade and another Kotobukiya Bishojo unboxing. Uh, it's going to be Terry Bogart from the King of Fighters. So stay tuned to the channel for all of those, as well as the usual daily uploads. Um, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, give that like button, that subscribe button, click that share button, spread the nerdiness. You know all the good stuff. Find me on all the socials pretty much everywhere now uh, in some way, shape, or form. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.